Welcome back to this series where we take a look to EU IC. It is steadily getting there now. We're getting closer and closer. So in this video, in this series, we're testing out decks. This is a deck profile. As you can see by the title in this one, we're looking at Lugia V-Star and its return to the format. If you do want to see Lugia in any matchups, we are filming a ton this weekend. So over the next week, there'll be a few on the channel. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see those. Let me know in the comments any changes you'd make to the deck or stuff you'd like to include. Any decks you'd like to see on the channel, whether that be deck lists or matches, and I will get to them as soon as possible. But like I said, in this one, it's all about Lugia. Lugia is finally back, and we will see why shortly. Obviously, we'll start off with a 4-3 line of Lugia. Uh, fairly standard, obviously not needing all of them, especially in this list. Lugia is not really going to be an attacker. You could use it before, and you can still use it in this list. I think it's fine, but ideally, you're attacking with a single prizes and trying to get rid of your Lugia with some collapsed stadiums. We've got Archeops, four of those, fairly standard, the most important card in this deck, obviously letting us accelerate energy. And the newest cards, I'll put them up here, we've got a 4-3 line of Cincino. Now, I've seen a lot of 3-3 lines, I think with the Call for Family attack on the Mincino, I do like the 4-3 slightly better, able just to flood the board with these guys as and when you need to. These are your main attackers, so you do want a ton of these in play throughout the game. Obviously not able to use anything like a super odd in this list, as you're only really getting value for the Pokemon, as all our energy is special. I like a 4-3. I think it works for the Lugia, it works for the Mincino. That's what we're going for in this list. If you've not seen these before, the Mincino attacks for 70 times. The attack is special roll and it does 70 for each special energy attached to that Pokemon. Obviously in this deck we've got a turn, I think it's 16 in total, so you can hit some massive numbers. You can knock out anything in the game. We've got three of them. Hopefully you're attacking into two prizes and can wrap the game up easily with these things. We do also have some other attackers for those single prize games, so we've got the two Snorlax. Like I say, really good into single prize matchups like Ancient Box. 150 health is pretty, it's pretty tough to deal with. 180 is a good number. Not only are you one-shotting any uh, single prizes, but you can also take out stuff like Luminion or a Squawkabilly, which we're probably going to see more and more of. We've also got one Luminion. Now, we would like a second. We do run two collapsed stadiums, so I don't think it would be a problem running a second. Obviously, just finding those supporters when you need them. The list is pretty tight at the moment, so for now, uh, at least we're going to be sticking with what we've got. But a second Luminion, if you're looking to change this list, is never a bad choice. Now, in terms of supporters, we've got the 3-1 lines, we've got 3 Research and 1 Serena. I have seen this come up in Japan, and I do think it's a super clever tech, not only for the discard, like the targeted discard, so you don't lose your energies, but also as a pseudo-gust. Obviously, with Lugia back, with Arceus back, all of these decks, V-Pokemon coming back in a big way in this format. Serena, obviously, able to bring up V-Pokemon. Very useful. I wouldn't mind a 2-2 split of this. The only reason I've gone for this is because we're running three boss anyway so it's a fairly uh, heavy on gust you could potentially go to uh, two two like i say and then maybe find some room instead of that third boss but we've got a two iono and three bosses orders obviously plenty of ways to gush you want to be attacking into the right pokemon with your sincinos you don't want to waste attacks into single prizes so far playing this we've found this is enough you've got enough discard in here obviously we've got a ton of ball search which we'll get onto in a second which is probably the most important part of this deck getting those archaeops out of your deck Getting them into play as soon as possible is always good. I would say this deck isn't, it's not rushing, it's not as essential to do that. I do think you can take a few turns. Like I say, you've got a ton of single prizes, so you're not as in as much of a rush, which is always good. Our A spec is obviously Master Ball, able to find any Pokemon when we need it. Whether that be the Arceus to discard, a Sensino to attack, a Lugia to summon in star. This this ball is essential. This A spec is essential. I honestly couldn't see running Lugia any other way. I think you need Master Ball until we get more search, and then potentially we can move into something else. Four Ultra Ball is fairly standard. Obviously, we need to discard our Archeops, so we need a ton of ways to discard them, but also find our Pokemon. To support that, we've got four Capturing Aroma. Again, this deck just needs to find Pokemon. You could potentially do more Great Balls. We do run a couple. So we've got two great balls on top of that and even a nest ball. Like I say, this deck is heavy into uh, just finding your Pokemon, getting set up early on. If you can't get set up, let's say your Lugia's knocked out turn two, you are so far behind. You need probably, ideally you only want one Lugia in play in this deck because you can collapse it away and just play a single prize board. However, sometimes that's not possible. 
Having two against those more aggressive decks is important. So getting two of those set up can be difficult. That's why we've got so much ball support. We've got like literally 10, 12 search cards, which is absolutely huge, as I say, just so important in this deck. And then finally, in terms of trainers, we've got two Collapse Stadium, as mentioned. Get rid of those Lugias, mainly to get rid of Illuminion. And this deck can focus on where I think it is strongest at just being a single prize deck. I'll finish off the deck list and then we'll talk a little bit about its matchups and its place in the meta game because I do think it's in a pretty good spot. We've got the four Gift Energy, obviously letting us draw up to seven when a Pokemon is knocked out. I think these are probably the best energy in the deck, honestly. We've got four Jets, so stuff can't get trapped in the active. And also it just powers up our Cincino. We've got four double turbo. Now you could probably cut one of these. They don't really work very well with Cincino. Cincino says special energy card. So it wouldn't count as two special energy, which is unfortunate. Obviously still good to attach to stuff like Snorlax or Retreat and Archeops, or just power up a Lugia V-Star as efficiently as possible. We've got two missed energy. These are mainly for stuff like um, your Lugia V-Star. Obviously making it slightly harder to deal with means it can't be knocked out by like a Requiem or or like a, um, a Roaring Moon, something like that. We've got the one V-Guard. Obviously, like I say, V Pokemon are back. Obviously, in the mirror, it's good against Giratina, against Arceus. There's a few good things that just make it more difficult to knock out. Finally, we've got a Therapeutic Energy, which goes on our Snorlax. I would like two of those, so you could potentially cut the Turbo for another one of those. Just means both of your Snorlaxes are usable because obviously once you're asleep, it can be quite difficult uh, to do anything. Obviously having to flip two coins instead of one. This is the deck list. I do think heading into this format, Lugia is maybe the most powerful deck. Being able to swing for any number with a single prize that is powerful. We've seen it with Gardevoir in the current format. So I think this is just gonna take the place of Gardevoir with that disappearing. Honestly, it feels very similar. You've got the big uh, expensive Pokemon on the bench worth two prizes. You've got a single prize or any active swinging for any number you see fit. Where this deck does really well, it's just good matchup spread. So into stuff like Charizard, which is probably the most popular deck. I say probably, it's by miles the most popular deck. Obviously using single prizes, them not being able to knock out your Lugias for quite a while. Maximum belt and things not helping in this matchup. This has a really good matchup into Charizard. So I would expect to see quite a lot of this. We obviously saw it win the Champions League in Japan, so it's on people's radar. I do think it is going to be the deck to beat, and it's going to be one I'm going to be focusing on in our videos. Like I say, if you want to see it played against anything in particular, let, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you want to see it against. We are just going to let it sort of run the gauntlet against stuff like Charizard. The other big decks like Arceus variants, so we've got Tina, we've got Vulpix. I think this deck just has an answer for everything. Where it struggles is going to be Iron Hand, so it's going to be dependent on how popular Future Box is. I think at this point Maridon's dead, so maybe this uh, the Chempal variant with Iron Hands in could be good into this. Obviously able to snipe Mincinos with Greninja early on, and then Iron Hands to pick up some prizes later. In general though, great matchup spread. A single prize that can knock out anything is always good, like I already mentioned with Gardevoir. If you've liked this video, if you want to see more, you want to see more games, you want to see more deck profiles let me know in the comments below what you want to see if you made it to this point in the video thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one